All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about how a simple motor starter controls work. Now, we're going to go through this a little bit different than normally what we do is, you know, we program with PLCs, Allen Bradley, Rockwell, in uh, that nature. So um, I've actually been trying to get this software for a while. So um, I'm actually going to go ahead and show you how to simulate and how this works in this process. So you'll actually get to see the full thing work as far as this goes you'll see the motor running you'll see if we uh, over here if we drag it down and then we come over here and adjust the load you'll see the amperage changing and everything so I'm going to show you a lot when it comes to this but let's first start out with some simple stuff so let's stop the uh, simulation right and let's go back into our design mode right here and what we have is we have uh, the 208 volt three phase right so we're bringing in three phase uh, 208 volts so that's going to be you know if you were to measure that leg to leg it would be 208 now when you measure that three phase it's going to be 208 now however if you measure that to um, well depending upon how your transformer is above um, you know coming to the to the uh, actually giving and driving this power which is creating this 208 power um, you could actually potentially have one leg going to a neutral or one leg going to ground which would be giving you 120 volts now in our case we're going to go ahead and show you how all this is wired up how everything is done so we have our 208 coming in three phase we have our fuses right here and then we have a basically we have um, the current meter right here where we're me measuring the current of one leg and then we have our motor starter Okay, this is our motor starter that's going to be controlled down here in our control circuit. And then we have our motor over here, which is if we pull up the parameters on the motor, we have that motor set as a three-phase or three phase 208 motor. So um, keep in mind, when it comes down to this very, very simple circuit, uh, we're taking two legs off of the 208 and turning it uh, off the H1 and H2 of the transformer. So um, if we actually go in there and look at that a little bit closer, you can see that we have uh, the L2 and L3 is going to be living, delivering single phase 208 to the transformer. And that's going to be coming out of that transformer and it's going to be doing 110. Now we do have that going to ground. And again, that does show that. Now with this said, this is where we're deriving our 110 volts. So this is where our 110 volt circuit is. This is where our start switch is, our stop switch is. Our start switch is a normally open switch. So meaning if you press it, that's when it closes. Our stop, so stop button is a normally closed switch, meaning it will stay closed until you press it. And when you press it, that is when it changes and opens up and breaks the circuit. So all this is in a series circuit. Okay, so you think about the controls on the control side of the loop for the actual motor contactor coil. That's a series circuit. Okay, so think about that. Right, so we're gonna back this thing up a little bit to uh, right here. This is perfectly fine. I'm gonna actually show you this and we're gonna, we're gonna break this down a little bit closer uh, about how it works, right? So. Uh, I can come over here to simulation, right? Again, you can see right there. So anytime it's green, you have power flowing through it. Um, now, when you when you look at this, so there's power already right here on the 208 automatically coming in through the fuses, through everything up to the contactor. So the contactor currently right now is off. Now we do have power going down to our transformer because we do not have anything breaking or turning that off or on. So at that point in time, we do have um, uh, voltage going to our transformer, which is going to be feeding the transformer in H1 and H2, which is going to be deriving our 110 coming out of the transformer on X1 and X2. All right, so this is where that circuit comes in and feeds down to where we have our start button. And you can see right there, um, I actually show you this in simulation mode. I can drag a multimeter down here and in my multimeter what I can do is put it on voltage and I can put this up here and show you that this voltage is exactly 208 
So if I can get the pin right, there you go. Two, you can see it's 208 right there. So that's coming in to, uh, again, uh, if we were to actually go in here and, and look directly at the transformer, right? And we were to put our leads directly on the transformer, we would see that's 208, right? So single phase 208. Now, again, when it comes down to it, we can move down to over here, and this is going to be 110, which is our outgoing of the transformer. So that's going to be our 120, 120 volts, right? So just keep that in mind. And you can also, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if it'll let me go to ground. Let's see if it does. Yeah. So uh, again, when it comes down to it, this is uh, going to be our circuit. And currently, and I'm saying that, so let's bring our, our multimeter over here, right? So if we look right here, we have zero volts. If I make this switch, you can see that it does give me voltage. And that's what supplies everything and powers up the motor over here. Now on the motor, I can change the torque over here and you can see that that, is, that does go up. You can see the torque going up and going down on that. But again, this is a very, very, very simple circuit. What I'm basically showing here is, well, how to read, uh, how, how to understand power for one. Um, this is basically power coming in. Let's take the multimeter off. So this is your power coming in on the top side, going into uh, your transformer and also feeding your motor. Uh, again, if I hit the stop button, you can see that stop button, it breaks the motor. The motor is no longer running. It does has no, no actual speed. It's not running at all, it has no amperage. And you can see the contactor did drop out. So again, the main power comes in, goes to the motor. Um, again, the control circuit is what controls the control relay, which is a, again a series circuit. Very simply put, is uh, going to be a start normally open switch, and then the stop button is a normally close switch. So in its states, their normal states, they are going to when they're not depressed. Like so, when they're de when they're pressed right now, you see that right there. When it's pressed, it's red. Okay, so when it's not pressed it's going to be in a uh, just the current state where it's not actuated right so just keep in mind this is the series circuit going back to a coil right so one side of a coil is getting 110 and the other side of the coil is getting the neutral from the transformer so just keep in mind that's a very 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 simple circuit but i wanted to actually explain that and explain that for those that are trying to learn the basics and fundamentals of just simple circuitry so when you come down to it you think about you know how to read it how to take a multimeter and what do you turn your multimeter on voltage right you turn your multimeter on voltage what should you be reading on the top of your transformer you know you put both of your leads on top of the transformer you should be reading your in line voltage going to your transformer right the feed voltage right which in our case is 208 we have that indicated over here now if we change to the bottom side of our transformer and we move our leads to the bottom side of the transformer now normally you would take both your leads off at the same time but again this is a software system so we have to take it one by one but when you go on the back side the secondary side of the transformer we're reading 110 so our control circuit in this case is a 110 circuit now uh, again i kept that as simple as possible so that we can understand exactly how this works so i can come over here to my coil and see when i turn that on you can see when my coil comes on you can see when I get power and when I don't get power so it's very very simple how to check circuits very simple how to understand circuits as soon as you understand the way everything is wired up and generally there are prints made for this type of scenario this is just a print that is automated you see everything working you see everything fluently working uh, a very good process to understand uh, there's a reason why I wanted to start from the very, very, very basics and actually show how everything's done, how everything is, you know, converted. You can see the amperage that it's currently running right now off the single leg. And you can see the, the over here, from the more torque I add to it, you know, you can see the RPMs changing as well as that goes as well. So just kind of wanted to show you uh, the basics and the basic principles behind you know, a simple circuit that would be controlling a motor through a normal contactor and just some simple things that would be 
you know, part of that circuit. Now I'm not doing overloads or nothing like that in here right as of yet. Uh, we do have fuses to protect it, but again, when a very simple circuit, this is exactly the way, you know, to understand and, and start the beginning of understanding how one would be put together. Now again, 90% of what I put produced so far has been PLC programming and stuff like that. So we're trying to transition and show a little bit more about simple circuitry, how you would wire this up so that when you do compare this to PLC logic, it's very simple to understand. Um, and when you come down to it, very, 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 very simple to understand the way a circuit like this is working. So with that said, hopefully you enjoyed that and we'll see you guys on the next one.